Welcome to the Christian Ministry Church Podcast. We're praying that this message equips and empowers you to live in the kingdom of God. Now for today's sermon by Pastor Tim Brooks. Thank you, worship team, for leading us. Thank you, thank you. Also, to add to what Eric said, thank you for all of our, just so many, not just the cast, but so many backstage, the workers that, uh, what a powerful message, a powerful biblical message that this church preached here Friday night to really one of the fullest audiences we've had in this building, and it was just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you all who worked so hard to make that possible. I'm telling you, this church is, we're doing all we can do now to reach our community, to share a biblical worldview, and to teach what God would have us to understand and do in our community. Thank you. Thank you for everybody that does their part. You bet. Well, I, I guess I would ask how many has been seeing it. I'm sure everybody has been seeing this TV ad, Jesus Gets You. I see it all the time, and I, I don't know, maybe it's just on sports channels, I, about all we've watched is basketball, but it's, it's on there all the time, Jesus gets you. Well, the first time I saw that ad, I went, whoa, I was thrilled, I was shocked, I was surprised, I mean, Jesus getting an ad on TV, uh, wow, this is, church, let me tell you something about life, here's what it teaches you, if something is too good to be true, it usually is. Today's time that we're in I, with ads that I do see on TV, I, I look and I ask Terry, what am I supposed to buy? I don't even know what they're advertising most of the time. I mean, it's so convoluted. I don't know if we're selling a car or perfume. I don't even know what we're talking about here. I, I have no idea what it's about. So when I started seeing this ad on TV, Jesus gets all of us. Jesus gets you. All right, now, the, an ad on TV playing often, someone's spending lots, we're talking millions of dollars to put this on TV, and they're not selling anything. There is, there's no financial gain from them spending all of this money, then there's no, they're, they're, there's no value. They're not getting money back as they're selling this product. Then I'm watching a basketball game and the center court table where the timekeeper, where the replay keeper, where the shot clock, all those people sit right there on center court. Now it's got that rolling screen in front of them that rolls advertisements. And I'm watching the screen roll, Jesus gets all of us. Whoa, a public state funded college? We can't open this ball game in prayer, yet Jesus is getting his name on a billboard? Wait a minute. Uh, okay, so, so we, we can put Jesus' name up on a state-funded college basketball game. It's not against the law. Where is the ACLU coming in here and suing? Surely that offended one person in the stand somewhere was damaged because they read that. I mean, no lawsuits? Okay, well, here's what you can do. You can put Jesus' name up if you're teaching wrong thinking about Jesus. Jesus' name on a rolling billboard right there on worldwide TV that we're filming this game, and there's no lawsuits. There's no ACLU championing in here. You know, I just couldn't help but think, I wonder what would happen if that billboard said, Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I, well, I just wonder what would happen if we rolled that one up just one time. You reckon the ACLU would fly down here from Washington in one minute? The, the purpose of the church is to teach biblical thinking. That, that's what we're here to do. We're not here to do our agenda. We're not here to teach our own opinions and our own ideas. The church is here to teach God's word to the community, to society. We're to infiltrate life with God's Word. The title of the message, ushers, please hold the doors closed. Jesus is not woke. Now, today, there is a shaping of Jesus 
It's just not who Jesus is. It's not what he said, and it's not at all what he stood for. And if you don't study God's word, if you don't read the red letters in the Bible, if we're ignorant of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the guys that walked with him and wrote down while he was talking exactly what he said, if, if, we're, if we're ignorant of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then a preacher that is more concerned with numbers than the truth is going to lead your thinking astray. You, we got to know Jesus. This church, we got to know Jesus. And if we don't know Jesus then a sweet ad on TV about Jesus will have you think in total lie about what he said. This church is going to know Jesus. We're going to know who he is. Can, can you wrap your mind around some group paying for a TV ad that sells nothing? They make no money just to reshape the thinking of America where Jesus is concerned. Why would that be a concern of theirs? You know, this group so wants Jesus to be okay with their lifestyle that they're going to spend millions making Jesus say what he didn't say so that they can live thinking Jesus is okay with their lifestyle. He gets all of us. When it, our president forbids an Easter party on the White House lawn from having any religious theme at all, yet we can use the name of Jesus if we're teaching wrong thinking about him. We're going to have to wake up. We're going to have to wake up. The job of the church is to keep the world biblically minded and Bible-based thinking. The job of the church is not to lie about what Jesus said, but to teach all he commanded. Not just one sentence that he said, teach all that he commanded. Now, hold on. I'm working. Now, I know you don't think I am, but I am personally working on softening my voice, on smiling when I minister the word. I'm not mad. I'm not angry. I am sharing the word of God in a non-condemning voice. Now, see, you didn't know I was working on that. I haven't come to offend anybody. I haven't come to hurt anybody. I hadn't come to condemn anybody. And I'm working on my tone of voice for a generation who is offended and hurt by literally everything. Especially what they disagree with. My job is to teach all that Jesus taught. And I'm going to do that in a loving, tender, wonderful voice. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Here's the problem. When Christians don't go to a church that teaches what God said, then a sweet ad on TV leads the church people's thinking astray. And my job is not to come here and offend anybody. My job is to make sure that our, as church people, that our thinking is biblically based, not worldly based. The title today is, Jesus Just Ain't Woke. Okay, what is woke? We're hearing that word a lot. Well, what is it? Woke is an adjective derived from an African-American vernacular, originally meaning alert to racial prejudices and discrimination. Alert to racial prejudices and discrimination. So to be woke was to be alert to racial prejudices and alert to discrimination. Now, this word is being hijacked by every group that is being formed. And I, I can't keep up with the number of groups. Man, the, the number of genders, which I always assumed was two, is now over 100 with genders be, and groups. And, and, uh, and all of these groups are yelling they've been discriminated against. Now the word woke 
has come to, it's moved from being alert to prejudices, it's moved to demands for support of their group. Demand that you support how they identify. Demands that we champion their group. Demands for legal rights for a certain group. Demands to endorse and support this new group. Demands for financial benefit for this new group. Now, here's what's devastating. And this is recent. Groups are forming and people now are identifying with their group. They identify as this. They identify as that. In church, for several hundred years, we identified as Americans. We were American. We were American. And now it's, I'm this, and I'm that. But for generations, we were Americans and very proud to be an American. We never referred to ourselves as, well, I'm Dutch American. I'm German American. I'm Italian American. We fought and died defending America. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter if you were male or female, what your race. We were all people. We were all one people group Americans. And we understood we were children of God created by him on purpose for a purpose. And we immigrated here and we learned to speak English we learned the Constitution, and we learned how it worked here, and we became citizens of America, and we're very proud of that. There was no distinctions here. There was no class system here. It didn't matter who you were. If you work hard, if you managed, and if you saved, you would do very well. It didn't matter what your background was. If you worked hard, you could do well in America. We learned our English, we learned constitution, we paid our taxes, we served in the armed forces, we defended America, Chinese, Portugal, German, French, African, Spanish, Dutch, countless backgrounds, men, women, black, white, red, yellow, we were Americans, we were Americans. And in all the world, lots of nations worldwide, and in all of the world, this was one nation that was under God. This was one nation, we live under God. We don't live under Buddha, we don't live, I mean, this was one nation here that was under God. And all of us, there's no distinctions. Now, clearly, with sin nature of people, you're always going to have people doing wrong. You'll always have people in sin. You'll always have people treating other people very wrongly. But that was not America. The slave issue was tragic. It was a horrible thing for America. But church, that wasn't America. That so wasn't America. We fought a civil war and stopped it. The only nation to do so. America said, we're not putting up with this. It's just growing and growing. And we're not putting up with this any longer. America stopped this terrible travesty. There's always been people in America that have done horrible things. But that was not America. And please, don't identify a church by a few that go there. Don't identify a nation by a few bad apples. You don't define a nation by some wrong that people did. This is the greatest nation in the world. And it's a real easy measurement. Well, how do you say this is the greatest nation? It's an easy measurement. You measure the greatest nation by the number of people wanting in and the number of people wanting out. And in my lifetime, there's never been homemade rafts shoving off of the coast to try to paddle down to Cuba. Everybody wants in here. We're the one that has immigration troubles, not other nations, because America is the greatest nation in the world. And there's no argument there if you just look at the facts. People want to be Americans. They risk their life to be Americans. They laid their life down to keep America, America. But it's the greatest nation in the world. Now, Jesus is not woke. And America is diverting, and people don't want to be identified as Americans. 
People hate the American dream. They hate the American concept. And now we're going, whoa, 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 hold on. Jesus is not championing the rights of any certain race or group. In the Bible, groups do not operate under a different set of commandments. The commandments weren't given for this color, and then these commandments given for this color. We, we don't have distinctions in the way money is got. Are you getting this? That's not the way it works. In God's world, in Scripture, everybody's called to love one another and to work together. And all of us are called to work and work together and provide for our own family. And God doesn't have financial distinctions and work requirements for different races of people. Jesus did not see racial distinctions to protect. Jesus did not see male and female to rally for or to pass laws for because the Bible says all are children of God. All of us are in sin, and all of us are in need of a Savior. And we're all brothers and sisters in Him. People have always been in sin. We're born with a sin nature. And sin causes prejudices. Sin causes hate crimes. We don't want to deal with hate crimes. We need to be dealing with sin. Sin causes hate crimes. Sin causes slavery. The issue is not the hate crime that we need legislation for. The issue is the condition of a heart that is in sin. Understand Jesus had no prejudice because there were no racial distinctions to be prejudiced over in his eyes. The LGBTQ, that is a lifestyle. It's not prejudice or not prejudice. Jesus said that is a lifestyle, that is a sin, an abomination to God. And Jesus doesn't get you. He's not okay with sin. He's called for repentance. Turn from your wicked ways and live free to serve him. Jesus was not prejudiced against Samaritans. Jesus was not prejudiced against Romans. Jesus wasn't prejudiced against Greeks. All are children of God. All are lost in sin, and all of us need to repent. Jesus is just not woke, because woke is not a thing in the Bible. There are not any. There are no social injustices. That's not a thing. There are no social injustices that we need to march for, that we need to protest for, and that we need to stand for. There's sin. There is sin, and sin wrongs people. Sin wrongs people. It's not a social injustice. It's sin that wrongs people, and we don't need to march for that. We need to call for repentance. We need to call for repentance. I'm not marching and holding a poster for social injustices. I'm calling for a wicked heart of man to repent. Ask Jesus to be Lord of your life and make a change in the way you live. When you wrong a child of God, and we're all children of God, no skin color, no bearing, that's not a thing. When you wrong a child of God, you wronged a brother or sister, and you've sinned. Fact is, the Bible says, look, when you're down here at the altar praying, and you remember you wronged somebody, here, you need to get up, and you go apologize, you go get it right. And he did not include a skin color to do that. You've wronged a brother and sister, don't, don't be down here at the altar doing something spiritually. We love people. You go and get it right with that person. You go and ask forgiveness we're not wronging people in life because God created us. God created us. The point today is Jesus did not preach against social injustices. And you've got to be aware of that when you watch these TV ads. Jesus never preached against social injustices. Jesus preached against sin. Jesus is not woke. He was not led by active awareness of systematic injustices and prejudices, especially those involving the treatment of ethnic, racial, 
are sexual minorities. What? What? Jesus was not led. Tim, how do you say Jesus is not woke? I'm telling you, he was not led by an active awareness of systematic injustices and prejudices. Jesus wasn't led by that. Jesus was led to deal with sin, to pay the price for sin so that you and I could repent of our sin and live free from it. He called for repentance. He called for us to be born again. He called for us to be set free from the hold that sin has on our life. The hate, the prejudices, what's in your heart against any other person. Doesn't matter what color their skin is. What's in your heart against any other person. Jesus died that you can be set free from that hate, from that bitterness. Jesus died so you don't want to burn anybody or hang anybody or shoot anybody's house up. Jesus died to set you free from the sin that drives us. If we, the church, don't read the Bible and know what it says, it won't be much longer before the church is woke. And the church's mission is to champion social injustices instead of preaching against sin. That's not the mission of the church. Today, I want to just address a few ideas about Jesus that is not at all what Jesus said or did. I just want to hit a few of these highlights that we are being flooded with. Modern Jesus preaches only on love. Biblical Jesus preaches God's righteousness. Modern Jesus gives you health and wealth. Biblical Jesus gives you salvation, hope, peace, and joy. Modern Jesus never says anything negative. Biblical Jesus warns of sin, judgment, and hell. Modern Jesus is loved and accepted by the world. He gets all of us. Biblical Jesus is hated and despised by the world. Modern Jesus serves your will and your desires. Biblical Jesus serves Father God and his will and his desires. Modern Jesus never offended you or anybody else. Biblical Jesus offends the world with truth. Modern Jesus preaches only love. No doubt Jesus preached on love. But we got to turn to the red letters in the Bible. We got to read what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 13 The red letters, Jesus' words, verse 40. Just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end. The Son of Man will send his angels. They will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angel will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's put that on TV ad. Modern Jesus preaches only love. Are you getting that from Facebook? Or are you getting that from the red letters in the Bible? Where are we getting our understanding of Jesus? Where are we getting our knowledge about Jesus? Because John chapter 5, Jesus told a crippled man, he said, just pick up your mat and walk. Well, the man stood up and walked. Everybody there saw the miracle. Later, Jesus found the healed man in the temple. And in verse 14, Jesus said, Now you are well, so stop sinning, or something even worse may happen to you. Woo, let's put that on a billboard. See, modern Jesus preaches love. No doubt Jesus loved. John chapter 8, the woman caught in adultery, Jesus reached out to her. And Jesus did not condemn her. There was no condemnation. But here's what you need to know. In verse 11, he said, now you go and sin no more. You're in sin. There is sin. And you go and don't do it anymore. Stop sinning. Jesus did not get her. He called for a change in her. Jesus only taught love. Have you read Matthew chapter 23? Matthew chapter 23. 
he looked and pointed at the religious leaders and he said, don't follow the example they're setting. Everything they do is for a show. And then in verse 13, what sorrow awaits you, you filthy, full of greed, self-indulgent. Verse 15, what sorrow awaits you. Verse 16, blind guides. Verse 17, blind fools. Verse 23, what sorrow awaits you. Verse 25, what sorrow awaits you. Verse 27, what sorrow awaits you. Read chapter 23 of Matthew. You whitewashed tombs. Oh, you're all white and clean and pretty on the outside, but inside you're filthy. Inside you're decaying and filthy. It just goes on. Verse 33, you snakes, you sons of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of hell? There might be a good TV ad. How will you escape the judgment of hell? Come on, let's get Jesus right. Let's just get our thinking right. Jesus called people to come out of sin. He doesn't get you in your sin. You brood of vipers called people snakes. And Jesus called people dogs. Boy, you think I'm hard to sit and listen to. I never said you bunch of dogs. And he called people snakes and dogs, not because of their skin color, not because of their gender, because that didn't have anything to do with it. He called them out for their sin. He called them out for what was in their heart. The message today is we got to stop directing all of this to race. We got to stop directing all of this to gender choice. We got to stop directing all of this to the group that you identify with. Whatever color, whatever nationality you are, we need to address sin in your life. And you need to know we're all in here, one in Christ. And we're all in here, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Every one of us, regardless of where you've come from and your background, we're one in him. Modern Jesus never said anything negative about anybody. Okay, before you say that, you might want to read what he said. Modern Jesus serves your will, serves your desires. Well, except in Matthew 26, he said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus sets the example over and over and over for us. It's not my decision. It's not my desire. It's not my gratification. It's God, your will be done in my life. It's not about you. It's not about your group. It's not about how you identify it's not how you were born. It's not about what happened to you. The fact is, God created you on purpose, for a purpose, and he wants you to live free from the hold of sin in your life. Modern Jesus was never offensive. He taught love and he was accepted by the world. Well, except in John 6, Jesus was teaching about drinking his blood, eating his flesh, he said, my flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Verse 61, they were offended. Verse 66, many turned away, deserted him, and followed him no more. John 7, 7, Jesus said, the world hates me because I accuse it of doing evil. We need to just write this down. Jesus warns of sin and judgment and hell throughout his earthly ministry. Jesus called those in sin to come out of sin. Jesus called for a change, and Jesus called us to be born again. Well, Tim, I was born this way. Well, Tim, I was born with these desires. Well, Tim, I was born to be attracted by the same sex. Well, Tim, I was, it's exactly, you're exactly right. That's why Jesus said, you need to be born again. You need to be born again. You're exactly right. I want you to know today there is no racial distinction. There's no gender distinction on who must be born again. There just isn't. All, A-L-L, -L, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And it's not about racial prejudice. It's about sin in our heart toward other people. 
It's about sin in our heart for people who Jesus died for, who Jesus shed his blood for. And you're prejudiced because of their color or you're prejudiced because of their background or you're looking down your nose at a brother or a sister who Jesus died for. All of us need to repent. All of us need to confess Jesus is Lord. All of us need to turn from our wicked ways. Every knee is called to bow. Every knee is called to bow. Jesus is not woke because he didn't call some knees to bow. Other knees don't have to bow because of the treatment that you had in your past. Other knees don't have to bow because, bless your heart, all people, every knee will bow and he comes Lord of our life. As Christians, we love people. We are commanded to make disciples and we're commanded to teach all, all he taught us. That's the call that's on our life. Last week, I bought some weed poison. I'm going to put it out around places on the ranch and I'm going to kill some weeds. I hate weeds because everywhere one weed grows, a bunch of grass doesn't. And I am in the grass growing business, not in the weed growing business. I hate weeds. And boy, I can grow them. You will say, Tim's got a green thumb. He can grow those weeds. When I got that poison, I didn't say, it's my poison, and I'll do with it what I want to do. I, I, I didn't say, I'd spray this wherever I want to spray it, and I'll spray it however I want to spray it. I got the manual. I got the manual out, and I started reading how to mix it, exactly where to spray it, Exactly when to spray it, exactly how much to spray. Ooh, there's a lot to study. I was reading about this poison. Because you can harm yourself. You can harm others if you don't follow the manual. Church, I, I love people. That's why I do what I do. I want to see weeds killed out of people's lives because weeds choke the good grass out of your life. I'm not against people. I'm not against anybody. I've given my life to helping children, helping teenagers, helping college age, helping adults, helping marriages, helping parents. I've given my life to helping people. And it's interesting, the folks that I have helped the most, the folks that we have given the most to are the ones that are hating you and criticizing you. I love people or I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I love people. I just hate weeds. I just hate weeds. And I don't mean to come across hard or mean or insensitive. I hate weeds. I'm reading the manual. Here's how you kill out the weeds. Here's what a weed looks like. Pictures are, here's, so you, see, I don't know what weeds look like. There's some weeds that I'm not aware. Oh, that's a weed right there. It's a weed. I didn't even know that was a weed. See, but the manual has got me pictures in there and it shows I love people. I want to see them happy. I want to see them blessed. But I've been studying this manual and I'm identifying weeds for you. There's a way that will lead to your destruction and I don't know what it is. That's why I'm reading this manual. I couldn't help but sit there on a bale of hay, reading this manual. And it said, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Then it got down and said, if you do, go immediately. Wash. Wash your hands. Flush your eyes. If you drink some milk. I mean, it just, it's, the way, okay. Don't, 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 don't. If you mess up, Here's what you can do. You can go to the Father. You can say, forgive me. I blew it. And wash that out of your life. And then it's said in the manual, start over with step one. I didn't blow it too bad. I, didn't, I got it washed off of me. I got it off of me. I got it off. Okay, I'm back to it now. Let's get back in this thing and let's go again. I'm just telling you today, Jesus, he ain't woke. 
And I say this not because I am mean, I'm intolerant, I don't love people. I say this because I read the manual. You know, I was filling that spray tank up and I was mixing that. And I started thinking, the guy that gave me that whole list of don'ts, he wasn't mean, he wasn't insensitive, he wasn't intolerant. Here's just the way this works. Don't get it on your skin. Don't get it in your eyes. He's mean. He's a bigot. He just didn't want this in my eyes. It's not because he's a bigot. Here's how you do this. Here's how you mix this. The guy that wrote that manual and told me this whole list of don'ts wasn't mean. He just wanted me to identify the weeds and make sure that I was making good decisions, not bad decisions. I love people. This church is here because we love people. And evidently, we're willing to take the hate email, the criticism, the people mad, the people leaving, the people offended, the criticism of my sermons. I don't know if you care to, you can look at my entire life has been spent trying to help somebody because we love people. This church is only here because we want to help people live life and life more abundant. Here's what I'm telling you. Jesus, he just ain't woke. He doesn't get you. He died for you. He died for the penalty of sin so that you could live free from sin. And he wants to change you into his image and for you to live your life from one degree of glory to the next. Y'all stand with me. Lord, today we, we're overwhelmed with gratitude to you for all that you have done for us, the price you have paid for us. And Lord, in this day and time when we're being inundated with wrong thinking, Lord, we want to keep our heart right before you. We want to keep our thinking about you straight. And Lord, today we walk from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory in our life. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to this message from Christian Ministries Church. If this message impacted you and you'd like to sow into our ministry, you can give at cmchurch.com. If you'd like to listen to more of our messages, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Christian Ministries. God bless.